for the first time since 1987. Johns Hopkins is a national champion. It is Blue Jay Way in Philadelphia. The school has won its eighth national championship. A dream realized for Dave Petromala. It's Monday, May 30th, 2005, and on a bright blue Memorial Day weekend, Johns Hopkins wins their eighth ever national championship, their first one since 1987. And things are looking good for the Blue Jays. Besides Syracuse, they hold the record for the most lacrosse national championships for a D1 school, and they continue to bring in star-studded recruits every single year. I mean, they have this freshman named Paul Rabel, and people think he's gonna be pretty good. And this other guy, Kyle Harrison, well, people think he's gonna go on to have a pretty good pro career. And the success does continue, and on May 28, 2007, they went again to capture their ninth title. Johns Hopkins is a household name in lacrosse. Some of the sport's most legendary stars like Dave Petromala, Kyle Harrison, and Paul Rabel graduated from Johns Hopkins and went on to be some of the most recognizable names in all of lacrosse. Long story short, when you think of the top of college lacrosse, Johns Hopkins immediately comes to mind. Well, for a while that was the case. At the time of making this video, Johns Hopkins has been to one Final Four in the past 13 seasons and finishing the last two seasons with a record of 4 and 9 and 7 and 9. So my question is simple. Why? Why is a program with this much history performing so much worse than they used to? Why is a team that's loaded with highly ranked recruits not making deep runs into the playoffs every single year? I'm Jake with Lax Weekly and today we're going to explore the rise, the fall and hopeful rise again of Johns Hopkins Lacrosse. And by the way, I'm making an exclusive community of lacrosse players called Lax Now. We'll have our own group chat, weekly film breakdowns, and college and pro player Q&A sessions. So if you want to be on the waitlist for Lax Now, go check out the link in the description or just go to laxnow.co. Now let's get back to the video. So to tackle this question, let's start with the most obvious answer. There's way more competition in college lacrosse than ever before. The pro game is exploding, youth lacrosse continues to be one of the fastest growing sports in America, and there's significantly more time and money being poured into the sport. So all this means more amazing players are going to more schools than just Johns Hopkins. Hopkins. Back when Hopkins first started playing in 1883, I can assure you that there was significantly less competition. And even in the NCAA era from 1971 on, Division I lacrosse just wasn't as big as it is now. Johns Hopkins and Syracuse were the two powerhouse schools, and they stockpiled top recruits every single year. So plain and simple, part of the reason for Hopkins' struggles is something every big program faces. Incredible lacrosse players go to every school, not just a few top schools anymore. But that actually leads me to my next point, which is that that Johns Hopkins had a unique geographical advantage over nearly every D1 school. It's located in Baltimore, a mecca of high school lacrosse. With one of the nation's top high school lacrosse conferences in the MIAA, big time high school programs like Boys Latin, Calvert Hall, and Loyola are just a few minutes away from Johns Hopkins' campus. That means that all the incredible players that go to these schools probably grew up going to Johns Hopkins games. Hopkins had a pipeline of incredible Baltimore talent that would go to school just a few miles away away from where they grew up. Since lacrosse wasn't as popular in other areas, having direct access to all the Baltimore recruits was a huge advantage. Now, however, two things are happening. Number one, places other than Baltimore are becoming hotbeds for lacrosse. States like Colorado, California, Florida, and Texas are all pumping out some of the nation's best players. For example, top college lacrosse players Sam Hanley and Tucker Dordovic are from Oregon, and Nakai Montgomery, a top recruit who went to Duke, is from Texas. This means that having a lock on all the Baltimore recruits isn't as big of a deal since schools can look at other areas. And number two, Baltimore kids are looking at areas outside of Baltimore. The top Baltimore recruits no longer just look to Hopkins. They're also looking at other blue chip schools like UVA, Duke, Maryland, and more. So this once massive advantage held by Johns Hopkins is no longer as strong or relevant. The next factor I want to talk about is the Johns Hopkins school itself. Hopkins is ranked as a top 10 school nationally and is well known for having our arguably the best medical program in the country. So academics wise, it's definitely up there with any D1 lacrosse school. But when you look at the social life of Johns Hopkins, this is where things get interesting. Although Johns Hopkins has a D1 lacrosse program, the rest of its sports are division three. In some ways that's really cool because lacrosse is such a big deal on campus. But at the same time, it lacks that big D1 atmosphere that other D1 schools can have. Like think of Duke or Virginia basketball games or Ohio State football games. Although you know you're gonna get a great education 
education at Johns Hopkins, the social scene looks a lot different. If you want a smaller school with a huge emphasis on lacrosse, Hopkins could be your place. But if you want a big school atmosphere, it doesn't stack up to those other schools. To me, I think that's part of the reason why recruits are choosing other schools. But it's all just personal preference. And this brings me to my next point, the Johns Hopkins head coaching situation. Chances are, if you've been watching college lacrosse for a while, you know that Dave Petromala, or Petro as many people call him, was the coach of Johns Hopkins for 20 years, and he is certainly one of the most recognizable coaches in all of college lacrosse. Well, in 2020, he was abruptly fired in April in the middle of the COVID pandemic. With only a four-paragraph press release and almost nothing else to show for his retirement, many Hopkins alumni were furious that Petromala was fired so quickly, and that Johns Hopkins didn't recognize him enough for all he did for the school. I mean, he was an integral part in bringing lacrosse on ESPNU. Without him, the sport would definitely not be where it is today. So then Hopkins quickly hired their next head coach, Peter Milliman. Now, Peter Milliman came from Cornell with a ton of momentum, leading the Big Red to a 5-0 start in 2020 and turning the program around after inheriting a team who went 5-8 in 2017. Even though Milliman had a nice track record, some alums were upset that a Blue Jays alum wasn't hired to be a coach. Someone like Hofstra head coach Seth Tierney or Towson head coach Sean Natalin. It seemed like Natalin would have made the most sense as he coached just a few minutes down the road and was one of the best defenders in the history of the program. Petro was also an all-time great defender at Hopkins, so it only seemed right to give Natalin a try. It turns out that supposedly Sean Natalin was never even offered an interview, which is quite interesting. So far, it's too early to tell whether Milliman was a good hire, but it's certainly been a rocky start for the former Cornell coach. Hopkins hasn't really looked like a top-tier college lacrosse team, and at times it can just be hard to watch as a fan. But there is a bright side. Luckily, I think that there's plenty of things that Johns Hopkins can do to regain their place at the top of college lacrosse. So I think the first thing they can do is be patient. At this point, Hopkins fans and alums shouldn't be expecting a national championship every year. Instead, they need to focus on becoming a top team in the Big Ten, beating out other schools like Maryland and Ohio State. Milliman still hasn't gotten a full recruiting class in, and I don't think it's fair to judge a coach until he picks up some of his guys. On the contrary, though, Hopkins isn't getting the same amount of highly ranked recruits as they used to. In the inside lacrosse rankings for the top 50 high school juniors, zero recruits are committed to play at Johns Hopkins. If you would have told me that five or 10 years ago that zero out of the top 50 recruits were going to Hopkins, I'd say there's absolutely no chance. Now, this doesn't mean Hopkins can't find any talent. It just means that they're going to have to look a little bit harder to find some of those overlooked guys. The next thing Hopkins needs to do is to become a more physical team. To me, when I look at Hopkins, I don't see the same type of physicality that I do with ACC and top Big Ten teams. I don't have a ton of data to support this, but their on-the-field product just doesn't look as good as other schools. I think potentially recruiting bigger, faster, stronger recruits will lead to better results on the field. When I think of Hopkins, I think of more skilled players, but right now I think the game of lacrosse is evolving to be a more physical one. The next thing they're going to need is buy-in, specifically from the Johns Hopkins alums. It seems like right now Hopkins alums are very divisive, and they need to find a way to rally together to support the school. With more alumni buy-in, Hopkins is going to be a better lacrosse program. And lastly, I think Johns Hopkins just needs a little momentum. It's been quite a few seasons of disappointment, and the Blue Jays need to get hot in May and make a run into the playoffs. When the postseason begins, all bets are off, and the Blue Jays are easily capable of making a run. With big-time recruits like Brendan Grimes and Jonathan Peshko, I think Johns Hopkins has what it takes. Even in 2021, the Blue Jays hung tough with Maryland and were in striking distance of winning the Big Ten tournament. Clearly, the pieces are there. Now it's just a matter of putting them all together when it matters the most. Now, as a huge college lacrosse fan, I want Johns Hopkins to return to its former glory. To me, college lacrosse is better when the Blue Jays are great. So why do you think Johns Hopkins lacrosse isn't the same program it used to be? And do you think they can actually get back to the top? And I read every comment, so comment down below what video you want to see next. I'm Jake with Lax Weekly. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.